Hello, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to talk about creation outside of Genesis. We tend to think of Genesis chapters one and two as the only place for creation type of uh, passages. But we're going to look at many other types of passages. So some great words for learning English, some great words for learning about creation and the Bible. I hope we have a great time today, and I really look forward to it. Let's learn together. So we start off with Acts chapter 17, verse 26. He made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the surface of the earth, having determined appointed seasons and the boundaries of their dwellings. So we have the word appointed, appointed, appointed. A time or place that is decided before the event happens. The convicted felon was sentenced at the appointed time and place. Appointed. Boundaries. 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 Marks the limits of an area. That's its boundary. As a peninsula, Korea's boundaries are mostly coastline. So as people know, I live in South Korea, and I love it here because there's so much ocean coastline. Sets the boundary. Boundaries. So Acts 17, 26. He made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the surface of the earth, having determined appointed seasons and the boundaries of their dwellings. So this becomes, he made from one blood every nation of men to have a home on all the surface of the earth, having determined a time or a place before it happened for the seasons and the limits of the area of their homes. So this idea of appointed and boundaries. Isaiah 40, 28. Haven't you known? Haven't you heard? The everlasting God, Yahweh, the creator of the ends of the earth, doesn't faint. He isn't weary. His understanding is unsearchable. So we have this word everlasting, everlasting, everlasting. Lasting either a very long time or without ending. Marriage is an everlasting covenant. Everlasting. Creator. 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 Something or someone brings something into existence. Harry Potter's creator is J.K. Rowling. So the idea of a creator. Faint. 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 Barely able to be perceived. What did you say? Or fall down and lose consciousness. Ah, oh, faint. The faint light of Titanic flares were misinterpreted as having a party. They barely saw the lights. Must be a great party on the Titanic. Faint. Weary, weary, weary. Really tired causing to feel tired. I was wearied by my two-year-old son's constant questions. My son is now a little bit older than that, but I do remember that. Never ending questions when he was two years old. Can you relate? Weary. Understanding. 
understanding. Understanding. Ah, I get it. I comprehend what you are saying. I have no understanding of the Swahili language. I can't speak it or read it or understand it. Understanding. Job 38, verse 4, says it this way. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if you have understanding. Understanding. Isaiah 40, 28. Haven't you known, haven't you heard the everlasting God, Yahweh? The creator of the ends of the earth doesn't faint. He isn't weary. His understanding is unsearchable. So the end of this verse goes like this. The bringer into existence of the ends of the earth doesn't fall down and lose consciousness. He isn't tired. His getting it is unsearchable. So the idea of everlasting, creator, faint, weary, understanding, many good words. Isaiah 45, 9, woe to him who strives with his maker, a clay pot among the clay pots of the earth. Shall the clay ask him who fashions it? What are you making? Or your work? He has no hands. Strives, 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 or to strive. To strongly fight with someone. But it also can mean to work hard to achieve something. Like I strive to get an A in calculus, and I got it. In this uh, sentence, it says, I strive to be truthful at all times. Strive, work hard to achieve something. Fashions, fashions, fashions. So this could be a popular trend in clothing, like ripped jeans or ripped pants. Seems to be, you know, not a new trend, but an ongoing trend. This also means a way of doing something. And it also means to be made in a form correct for its purpose. You fashion something, you make it. Proteins are fashioned from their corresponding DNA sequences. So proteins are made in a form that go with their DNA sequences. Fashions. So Isaiah 45, 9. Woe to him who strives with his maker, a clay pot among the clay pots of the earth. Shall the clay ask him who fashions it? What are you making or your work? He has no hands. This could be reworded. Woe to him who strongly fights with his maker, a clay pot among the clay pots of the earth. Shall the clay ask him who made it in a form correct for its purpose? What are you making? Or your work, he has no hands. So they deal with strives, fashions. Job 38, verses 4 and 6. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. What were its foundations fastened on? Or who laid its cornerstone? Foundations, foundations, foundations. This is the lowest part of a building that holds the most weight, the foundation of a building. 
So if you watch a building being built, right, the foundation seems to take weeks. And then overnight, walls go up. Then a few nights later, the roof goes up and you're finished. So the foundation takes the most time to build. Foundations can also be the underlying basis for something, right? The foundation of my belief system is this. The foundation of my life is to give all I have to the poor. So that's my foundation or this person's foundation. So what is your foundation? The underlying basis. Declare, declare, declare. To say something emphatically, solemnly, or clearly. You, you also use declare to say what you bring into another country. You go to the line with your passport, and they'll ask, do you have anything to declare? Are you bringing anything into the country? So the idea of declare. I like this one. It used to be a kid's toy. And it's one, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. Then you fight with your thumb. I always liked that as a child. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. And you have some fun. So the idea of declare. Fastened, fastened, fastened. To close up securely. So my shirt is fastened with buttons, fastened. We fastened the tent flaps to keep out the cold. So if you're ever camping, you do up the tent flaps, fastened. Cornerstone, cornerstone, cornerstone. So could be something important that a thing depends on, right? This is the cornerstone of democracy or joining two walls at the base of a building in the corner, right? Two walls in the corner. The cornerstone at the base of the building was dated 1779. So the cornerstone. So Job 38, four and six, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. What were its foundations fastened on? Or who laid its cornerstone? This can become, where were you when I laid the lowest parts of the earth. Say it clearly. If you have understanding, you get it. What were the lowest parts of the earth secured to? Or who laid its base at the corner? So the idea of foundations, right? We had before declare, understanding. And then we have fastened, and cornerstone. Again, many useful, good words. Verse 7 says this. He gathers the water of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deeps in storehouses. Heap, heap, heap. Thrown together in a pile. This also could be a large amount of. He has heaps of cash, for instance. But this sentence says this. The twins' room had heaps of dirty clothes that filled a corner of the room. You have older children. Maybe you can relate to this. Bunch of dirty clothes in the corner. Heap. Storehouses. Storehouses, storehouses, a building for storage. It also could be something in large supply. So he has a storehouse of cash, right? A lot of cash. This sentence is Google 
is an enormous storehouse of facts on virtually everyone. So storehouses. So Psalm 33, seven. I like this picture because it looks like the sea. It is the sea full of water. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deeps in storehouses. This could become, he gathers the water of the sea together as a pile thrown together. He lays up the deeps in buildings for storage. Verse 8 says this, let all the earth fear Yahweh. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Awe, awe, awe. Leaves you feeling partly fearful or in wonder and partially in deep respect. So I was in awe of her abilities in the spelling bee. Spelling bee is when you spell difficult words. Right? And you say the word, you spell it, say the word again. So I was in awe of her ability. So awe can be used in many ways. So Psalm 33, let all the earth fear Yahweh. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Let all the earth fear Yahweh. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in respectful wonder of him. Respectful wonder. Awe. Psalm 139, verse 13. For you formed my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Formed. 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 To create something by bringing together its parts or made into a certain shape to form it, make it. The university was formed in 1888 to help former slaves. So there's another, uh, there's a number of universities in America that were formed to help uh, former slaves. So these are usually called HBCU, um, historically black uh, colleges and universities. <laughs> I think that's what it was. I actually used to teach at one of those. So it's a great thing to help former slaves. Formed. Knit. 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 To loop wool by hand on a machine or by hand to make sweaters, blankets, things like that. You can also use it to unite, right? Where we're knit together as a group. She knitted me a sweater for the cold Alaskan nights. So a nice sweater that's very warm for the winter, knit. Psalm 139, 13 looks like this. For you formed my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. For you created my inmost being by bringing together its parts. You looped me together in my mother's womb. So the idea of knit and the idea of formed. Verse 14 says this. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. My soul knows that very well. Wonderfully, wonderfully, wonderfully. This is to make something delightful or fantastic or works well together. My new note-taking app works wonderfully with my new laptop. So the note-taking app works well together with the new laptop. Wonderfully. 
Psalm 139, verse 14, then looks like this. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. My soul knows that very well. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and delightfully made. Your works are wonderful or delightful. My soul knows that very well. So here we have the words wonderfully, wonderfully, wonderful. So verse 15 says this, my frame wasn't hidden from you when I was made in secret, woven together in the depths of the earth. Secret, secret, secret. Something you shouldn't tell or show anyone. Secret. I can't tell you the secret of my success. You will have to buy the book, right? So this, whoever this person is, wants you to pay to know the secret of their success. Secret. Woven. 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 This is the past participle of weave, to weave something. This is the way textiles are made from long threads that are interlaced. Also could mean interconnected parts, right? You know, the internet is woven together from various sites. Exodus 39, 27, we're, words it like this. They made the tunics of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and for his sons. So woven together, long threads. Depths, 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 or just depth. Measurement from the surface to the bottom of something. Surface to the bottom, that it's depth. But it also could mean your depth of character, right? You know, you're not just shallow on the surface. You go deep into who you are. The sentence says, he showed great depth as an actor and could play the villain to the leading man. So he had great depth, not just surface, depth, depths. So Psalm 139, verse 15, my frame wasn't hidden from you when I was made in secret, woven together in the depths of the earth. My frame wasn't hidden from you when I was made without showing or telling anyone, interlaced together in the deep part of the earth. So the idea of secret woven, and depths. Verse 16 says this, your eyes saw my body. In your book, they were all written, the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there were none of them. Ordained, ordained, ordained. This is confirmed in the church as a pastor, priest, or maybe minister to declare officially. So if you ordain somebody, he's a good choice. They're a good choice to be a pastor. Good job. He was ordained as a minister in the Anglican church back in August. Ordained, said, okay. Psalm 139, 16 says this. Your eyes saw my body. In your book, they were all written. The days that were ordained for me, when as yet there were none of them. Your eyes saw my body. In your book, they were all written. The days that were declared officially for me, when as yet there were none of them. So we have this word ordained. Ordained. So Romans 1, verse 18, says this. 
for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known of God is revealed in them, for God revealed it to them. So we have this word revealed, revealed, revealed. Information is now known that was unknown before, the idea of revealed. Sherlock Holmes revealed that the murderer was actually the owner of the house. This is very famous in Sherlock Holmes stories. He reveals who the murderer was. We have the joke, the butler did it, <laughs> right? A lot of these murder mysteries, it's the butler. He revealed the butler did it. But in this one, he revealed was the owner of the house. Revealed. Suppress. 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 You stop from feeling, doing, developing, or giving out something. Just stop it. Modern media forcibly suppresses dissenting views. So, you know, what you're saying is against what this media outlet stands for. They could suppress it. Stop you from speaking, right? Stop you from giving out your opinion. Suppress. So Romans 1.18 and 19 says this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known of God is revealed in them. For God revealed it to them. This can become, for the wrath of God is now known from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who stop giving out the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known of God is now known in them. For God made it known it to them. For God made it known it to them. So this is the idea of, we have this word revealed and suppress. Revealed and suppress. Verse 20 says this, for the invisible things of him, since the creation of the world are clearly seen, being perceived through the things that are made, even his everlasting power and divinity, that they may be without excuse. So we have two soccer goals here. They're obviously not being used. They're grown over and old, but clearly they're soccer goals, right? That's what they are. Clearly, clearly, clearly. This is obvious. And without doubt, like I said, clearly these are soccer goals, even though the net's gone and they're overgrown and old. Clearly. Hurricane Ian clearly left evidence of this devastation in Florida. So clearly you can tell that a hurricane passed through, especially in Fort Myers in Florida. Clearly. Perceived, perceived, perceived. You become aware of something. This is also how you see the world. I perceive the world this way. Or this sentence says, if you perceive the world to be a happy place, it is easier to be happy in it. So if you think about it, if you see the world as happy, you can be happier, perceived. Romans 1.20, for the invisible things of him since the creation of the world are clearly seen, being perceived through the things that are made, 
even his everlasting power and divinity, that they may be without excuse. This can become, for the, for the invisible things of him, since the creation of the world, are without doubt seen, being made aware of through the things that are made, even his never ending power and divinity, that they may be without excuse. So we've got um, perceived, everlasting. Romans 8, 19 says this, for the creation waits with eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Expectation, 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 a strong belief that something good will happen in the future. We had high expectations of our daughter as she was the first to go to college in our family. We believe something good is going to happen. Expectation. So Romans 8, 19, for the creation waits with eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. So this can become, for the creation waits with strong belief for the children of God to be revealed in the future. So it also has this word revealed. Something that was not known is now going to become known. So we have this word expectation. And here we have this word again, revealed. So verse 21 says this that the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of decay into the liberty of the glory of the children of God. So we have this word decay, 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 to fall apart and rot from bacteria or fungi, right? So if you put some you know, an apple in the ground and just leave it there, it'll fall apart, go back into the earth, decay. The decay of Western civilization has been going on for decades. So in this sentence, Western civilization is falling apart. So the idea of decay. Liberty, liberty, liberty means freedom, free to act as you please, to a limit. <laughs> You're not totally free, but generally you can do whatever doesn't go against the laws of the land. Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, meant freedom to immigrants to Ellis Island. So people came to America to be free. The, the plaque underneath it, it has this, these words to yearning to be free. They want liberty or freedom. Romans 8.21, that the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of decay into the liberty of the glory of the children of God. This becomes that the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of falling apart into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. So we have decay and we have the word liberty. Romans 8, 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. Travails, travails, travails. Effort that is painful and requires a lot of work. We talk a lot about this in childbearing, right? Really painful to deliver a baby. Requires a lot of work. Thank you to all mothers out there, because we wouldn't be here. The travails of the plague victims were almost unbearable. So we have COVID-19, 
We had the Spanish flu. We had the Black Death, all these plagues. Sometimes it was unbearable, the travails. So Romans 8, for we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. This becomes, for we know that the whole creation groans and works in pain together until now. So the idea of travails, travails. So there you have it. There really is a lot of verses about creation. It's not all just in Genesis 1 or 2. So I hope you learn many new words, many ways we can express ourselves in English. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope you've learned many, many new things. So remember, the Bible isn't just an old book. It's very good to be used as a textbook for learning English. We still use many of the words in the Bible today, very useful in learning it. Just put them in some modern day situations. And my pleasure to be your teacher during these lessons. And I hope to see you again in future classes. Have a great day. Bye.